in the 1950s, in the shadow of segregation, blacks and whites lived separate lives, separate schools, neighborhoods, restaurants. What was so different about us that would cause us to be so unattractive that people would just close the doors? And just like today, some people thought it was time for change. There comes a time when you have to stand up. For Joseph McNeil, Franklin McCain, and their two college dorm mates, that time was February 1st, 1960, the day they walked into a Greensboro Woolworths and sat down at the segregated lunch counter. If I were lucky, I would be carted off to jail for a long, long time. If you were lucky? If I were lucky. And if I were not so lucky, then I would be going back to my campus in a pine box. It was an act of defiance that shocked everyone. The waitress saw us, I think, immediately when we sat. But she was so stunned. Remember exactly what she said to you? You boys can't be served. You're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. How would you describe the way you were feeling? Were you nervous, scared, exhilarated? I certainly wasn't afraid. And I wasn't afraid because I was too angry to be afraid. That day, a movement began. We're not going to leave until you serve us. So we sat there. And Woolworths closed early, but the young men returned each day after that. They were soon joined by thousands of supporters and the Ku Klux Klan. What was the, the worst thing anybody said to you, anybody did to you? They used every negative word, a curse word, a nigger go back to Africa. But there was one woman both say they will never forget. An elderly white woman probably uh, in her, I'd say, 70s or 80s. And she whispered in a calm voice, boys, I am so proud of you. It was the first sustained sit-in of the civil rights era. Woolworths desegregated six months later. The Greensboro Four had inspired sit-ins in 78 cities across the South and motivated other college students to become freedom riders, which is why that lunch counter ended up here at the Smithsonian. I'd only sat on a dumb stool. I hadn't even been served. But I had a different feeling altogether. A feeling that hasn't gone away as the nation prepares to inaugurate its first African-American president. I think I'm part of that continuum. And without that, that continuum, I'm not so sure that we would have an African-American president elect. And let's not forget the other two members of the Greensboro Four. Ezell Blair now works with the disabled in New Bedford, Massachusetts. David Richmond died of lung cancer in 1990. He was 49 years old.